Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Botswana Corporate Techs. We would like to look at procedures and administration of taxation. Now, first of all, we want to look at the two important concepts, which are tax evasion and tax avoidance. Now, what is tax evasion? Now, tax evasion, this is any action taken to evade taxes by illegal means. Now, we're talking about ways in which a person or a taxpayer avoids paying their taxes in an illegal manner. This may involve suppression of information, e.g. failing to declare taxable income to BURS, or submitting false information, for example, claiming expenses that have not been incurred, or overstating expenses. On the other hand, tax avoidance, this is using the taxation principles to one's own advantage. This is achieved by arranging one's tax affairs in a manner that minimizes one's tax liability. This is a legal uh, way of avoiding tax. And it does not in any way suggest misleading the BURS. For example, investing money in a Botswana Savings Bank account where interest received is tax-free. So you'd find that tax avoidance is also known as tax planning. Now let's look at the tax returns and tax collection system. The question you would want to ask yourself is what are tax returns? Now a tax return it is a document issued by the Botswana uh, Unified Revenue Services that is completed by a taxpayer with the details relating to his or her taxable income annually. Now, the rules for submission differ between individuals and companies. That's to say that a notice is a document issued by BURS to a taxpayer with the details of instructions or information for his or her attention. For example, BURS may issue a notice of assessment which advises the amount owed to or by the tax pay. Now, notices or forms from BURS must be signed either by the Commissioner General or other duly authorized officer. Now, tax returns for self-assessment are usually sent out in June before the commencement of the tax year. And this should also be obtained from BURIS offices. Now, the next question you'd want to know is how is income tax collected? Now, there are a number of ways uh, in which the tax is collected. Now, there's what we call the accrual method. Uh, this means a taxpayer is liable to tax on the income that he becomes unconditionally entitled to receive. If we look at a certain case in the principle of accruals, it was established in W.H. Litigan v. C.I.R.A. in 1926. Now, the taxpayer sold wine for which payment was due in installments in the current year and in the future. The taxpayer argued that the future payments had not yet accrued in the current year and should therefore not be included in his gross income. The court held against the taxpayer and stated that accrued meant to become unconditionally entitled and that once delivered was made, the taxpayer had become unconditionally entitled and that once The delivery had occurred. He was unconditionally entitled to the income 
regardless of when the actual payment was received the delay in the payment does not affect the date of accrual now for this reason therefore contingent income this is conditional does not constitute gross income because there is no unconditional entitlement to the income now let's look at receipt now a receipt is only included in the gross income if it is received for the benefit of the taxpayer now consequently we're saying that amounts received by an agent on behalf of the principal do not fall into the agent's gross income now if we're looking at the case of uh, golden naris versus cira in 1974 the taxpayer sold sheep on behalf of the ship's own and it was held that she did not sell the sheep for her own benefit but for the benefit of ultimate owner and therefore the proceeds could not be included in her gross income Are we together, ladies and gentlemen? Therefore, according to section 10, an amount which accrues to a person shall be deemed to have accrued in the case of employment and at the time it is received by him, due and payable even though not actually paid to him, or credited in account, reinvested, accumulated, capitalized, carried to reserve, or otherwise disposed of by him or on his behalf. Are we together? Now, we would like to look at Botswana source based system of taxation. Now, we have two systems we have the residence based taxation and then we have the source based taxation now what we're saying is that there are two main approaches to the system of taxation uh, if you look at most countries they exercise their jurisdiction to the tax by reference to factors that assume a sufficient connection between the relevant country and the taxable person and or the tax income now let's talk about the resident based taxation now taxation systems which are based on a sufficient connection between the relevant country and the taxable person apply the principle of residence based taxation what we are saying is that in residence based system it will normally charge tax on the worldwide income of their residents for example a resident of Botswana who earns dividends from an investment in DRC would be liable to tax in Botswana on those dividends because he resides in Botswana. Now, source based taxation, we are saying that taxation system based on a sufficient connection between the relevant country and the taxable income apply the principle of source-based taxation such tax system uh, tax income derived from sources in their country regardless of the residence of the tax pay so we're simply saying that uh, tax would be charged based on the source of the income not on the residence of the tax now let us look at deadlines and penalties yes now taxes have deadlines huh yes now the tax year runs from the 1st of july all the way up to the 30th of June the following year and therefore between the 30th of June up to 30 September you have three months 
to submit your tax returns. After which, late payment will attract uh, a penalty of 1.5% interest per month, which is charged for the late submission of the tax return. Now, companies are required to submit their tax returns <clears throat> four months after the end of the accounting period. of which non-payment of tax is liable to a compound interest of 1.5% per month or part thereof as noted above. Now, the other thing with uh, company companies which pay tax. Now, uh, At the beginning of the year, the company must estimate its tax liability, okay? The estimated tax liability is paid in four equal installments beginning three months after the start of the accounting period, right? Now, a fifth installment would be required to be submitted four months after the end of the accounting period. Now, this final installment will be the difference between the estimated and the actual tax liability. If the tax paid is less than 20% of the actual liability, then a compound interest of 1.5% shall be charged for each month that it remains unpaid. If the estimated tax liability is less than 50,000 pula, a company is permitted to either pay such tax in quarterly installments of the pay lump sum in one installment at the end of submitting its tax returns. Now, we also need to look at the preservation of documents. Now, if you are running your business in Botswana, you are supposed to keep all your books, all your receipts, all the documentation uh, as part of your business. This will be required so that if at any point BURIS comes to check, all the documentation to support your claims should be there. And this documentation should be kept for a period of eight years after the end of each tax year. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This was LO2 of taxation.